Welcome to Curiosity Labs Between Two Nerds, uh, a podcast for curious minds where hopefully you've uh, listened or seen us before. Uh, as a quick reminder, if you are watching us on YouTube, you can, and you need your eyes for something else, uh, you can, if you like, find us on all the major podcast channels, or indeed if you're listening to us on a podcast and you'd like to see what we look like for whatever reason, uh, check us out on YouTube Between Two Nerds. Uh, please do like, subscribe uh, down there and hit that little bell button if you're on YouTube uh, so we can tell you when we've got new content uh, and give us a rate and please also leave a comment. We do generally enjoy the comments, I think. <laughs> uh, most of the comments we enjoy, but we certainly try and reply to all of them. So if you've seen us before, you know that every week we invite a small human being to sit between us uh, and have a little chat about science. And this week's excellent small human being <laughs> is... Sherazad and I am 11. 11. Cool. Big Hi, number. Sherazad. <laughs> and you know the nerds, I'm Mo. And I'm Eugene. Okay, Sherazad, what would you like to talk about? Go How on. does slime work? How does slime work? Very cool. All right. Uh, the slimy. I'm guessing you enjoy playing with slime. I love slime. Yeah. Do you? Why do you love slime? Because it's satisfying. <laughs> What's satisfying about slime? It... Uh, Feels nice. I don't know. Stretchiness, <laughs> the stretchy. slippery. It's like a sensory thing, and it's I guess. Stretchy, and you can like poke it and stuff. It's so. <laughs> you can poke a lot of things, though. Like, <laughs> it's the only thing which doesn't mind being poked. And actually, Eugene doesn't mind being poked. Poke yeah, him. Poke me. Is that, <laughs> is that a satisfying slime? Not really. Probably not. No. <laughs> now, are you a slime buyer or a slime maker? Uh, I buy slimes and then they get onto everything and when I make slime it doesn't work or it stinks. It doesn't work? How have you made slime before? Like which methods with have like you used? With like laundry powder mixed with water and then I add it to glue. Okay, so <laughs> glue, right, yeah. okay. All right. so how does slime work? Now what's so cool about slime is that I guess all its cool unique properties is because it's kind of in between phases of matter. So you know what the phases of matter are? Yeah. Yeah? What are they? Solid, liquid, and gas. Very good. good. Very good. Now, there's actually more. Usually in school, you learn about three, four. Plasma, uh, I think. Yeah, plasma. So those are, your, those are the phases of matter you'll in, you would encounter in your, not everyday life, but pretty much everyday. Yeah, education. Yeah, <laughs> plasma, right? Plasma, though, the one that we don't, um, you probably may not heard of, but you have is what the sun is made out of. It's kind of like a charged gas. It's a gas with an electric charge, so it kind of behaves a bit like a liquid as well, all right? But there are more uh, phases of matter, way, way, There's way loads, more, yeah. So the, the, the very exotic, which means they would only exist in very certain conditions and, a lot, and laboratory conditions, right? Like Bose-Einstein condensate. Do you and, know that one? No, I have absolutely no idea. And there's another Bose, Einstein something or the other. Then there's a super conducting liquid, a super conducting super fluid. There's a whole bunch of these. They, they exist in very, very, very particular conditions, right? Yes. Now, slime is sort of in between two of those phases. Solid and liquid. There you Very go. Good. good job. So solid, what's unique about a solid? You can't change its shape. You can't like, you can't change its shape basically. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, you could, but it requires a lot of energy, right? So if I had to change the shape of a table, I would have to get out a saw and start cutting it down and stuff. So I'm not actually changing the you arrangement of the molecules that make up that object, right? Uh, then liquid, what's so unique about a liquid? It, you can like pour it, it changes its shape whenever, whenever. Exactly. It, mm -hmm. it takes the shape of whatever it's put inside. Yeah, Very good. exactly. You've paid attention at school, <laughs> I can tell. Or in Curiosity Lab. Of course, cool. yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, yeah, so it all has to do with how the molecules are arranged and what's holding them together. Now in a solid, right? There's a definite arrangement of the molecules, okay? So if you were to take something like ice, each molecule of water in the ice is like bonded, right, rigidly to 
three other molecules of water. Three, I think. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. Okay. Um, so there's something holding those molecules in place. And because there's this is very definite pattern to the way they're held, that's why ice has a bridge, has a shape mm. to it. Whereas in water, now what, how do you think the molecules in water might be arranged? That we're like more loose. Yeah. Very good. So do you think there are any of those rigid bonds in there? No. 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 Holding hands lightly. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of actually, so there are forces holding water together, especially. They're called van der Waals forces. It's like this very weak uh, electric attraction. You know, we've done, we learned about static electricity, yeah. right? So if you have a positively charged object and a negatively charged object, they will... Attract. Exactly. So water is, is a polar molecule, so there is charges to it. So there is some force holding that water together. But because it's not a rigid uh, bond... Then it those, can take the shape of anything. Yeah, so yeah, so the molecules start slipping past each other. They swap places with each other. So if you pour it into whichever container, it can mold and change its shape to that container. Right? Now with slime, it is kind of in between those mm. two. Right? So when you, you get your glue, right? Your PVA glue. It has to be that kind of glue. It's called polyvinyl alcohol glue, right? And you, um, let's say, you add the activator. So first it's a liquid, so the same thing, molecules moving around. Yeah, like just like that. <laughs> it's a good little molecule hand gesture, right? And then you add the activator. What the activator does, it joins up these molecules into with each other. It forms a bond between them. That's what the activator is doing. Yeah, but how does it join them together? Ah, good. So, I think with... The, with That's why you need the PVA glue. <laughs> <laughs> I think with uh, borax, it actually forms a chemical bond between these molecules and a very certain... between certain atoms in those molecules. So, the borax in there, right, which is the most commonly used activator, right, that forms an actual chemical bond between those molecules, okay? But these bonds, so actually what happens is the molecules form long chains, and so there'll be a bunch of long chains of these molecules, and in between those changes, oh, uh, changes, in between those chains, there are no bonds holding the chains together. So the chains can slip and slide past each other, but there are still bonds within the chain. Right? So it has some of those solid properties and some of those liquid properties. And that's why slime, if you put whatever container it's, it's in, slimy. yeah, if you could take, make yeah. it into a lump and put it on the table and it would kind of just melt into a puddle. But if you right? add too much borax and that's why it becomes hard. Ex it gets yeah. quite rubbery. Yeah. yeah. So it becomes more like, what do you call it? Putty? Yeah? Is putty the harder one? No, it's not. <laughs> well, it's not hard, but what do I, I think it is. I think yeah. If you buy it, there's oh, a putty, yeah. there's the slime. Yeah. The thing is, all the slime in shops, they call everything putty, so. Oh, okay, fine. So if, I, I think slime's good. If you hold the slime, like it gravity. will slowly, yeah. gravity will stretch it and stretch it, and you yeah. can get crazy lengths. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what we call those chains of molecules? No. It's what you're kind of making. So they're, they're polymers. So you're, a slime is made of polymers, it's yeah. kind of, it is a polymer. Yeah. Uh, and if you hang it, it'll dangle, whereas if you over borax or over activate or make a putty, if you hold that, gravity probably would have an yeah, effect. Yeah, it would, but, but it takes, it's not as cool. It's not as satisfying. Yeah. So polymer is a long chain molecule. And there's lots, like plastic is a polymer. So are some like starch and things, right? Those are all polymers. So the molecules joined up in long chains, and uh, yeah, cool. Yeah. That's yeah. how slime works. What color slime do you make? Uh, <laughs> These are important questions. <laughs> the last time I made it blue, it blue. didn't look very good. No, a slime should be green. Oh. I think That's, everyone knows the slime should be green. That's too boring, because like, you can make different boring. colors. You let me galaxy slime like pink. Purple blue, I think. Yeah. I, I do quite like spacey slime. <laughs> yeah, that would be yeah. cool. I've insisted on that before. <laughs> but Sly, if you've ever seen, so I, whatever year, Ghostbusters, the, the real Ghostbusters, the original <laughs> right. came out, which is probably pre 
birth for everyone else on this uh, yeah, on this podcast. I think it was before I, guess, I, I was, was born. Like two years ago. That's, that's the modern one. Oh. Was it 86? I well, guess. Which, which makes me about nine. <laughs> but that, that slime is green. Slime should be green, in my opinion. <laughs> but when, when you look at a green slime, you think this slime is not going to be good because someone bought it from a shop. It's like... Pro all, slime. All the slime that people sell, if you try to stretch, it just breaks. Yeah. Really? It breaks. Does it? You need some Curiosity Lab slime. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which can break occasionally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's great at the gravity. I think one though. of the things why you need to, when you're making it, you don't want to, so you know how you add activator and some of that glue turns into slime, right? Yeah. You think you should take that bit out and then add more activator into the glue mm. that's in the container. Because if you keep adding it with that lump of slime in there, you're just overactivating that yeah. one lump. Hard piece of rubber and a wet bit around it. Yeah. So you yes. should keep like separating that. But then if you take that to make it more stretchy, if you take that slime and you add it into like a bowl of slightly warm water, just for like mm. a few seconds, the water molecules go in there and they make it more pliable. So it's more stretchy. If you put slime underwater, then it can like stretch better. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. cool. You need a good slime game. Yeah. I yeah. do not like slime. <laughs> How can you don't like slime? Just never cared. I'm a parent, <laughs> so cool. I don't like slime. Yeah, but even when I was a kid, like people we used to make slime, not obviously as much as they do now, but just didn't care. It doesn't. It didn't excite me. <laughs> is there, there's a certain, there is a yeah, satisfaction. There is. The first slime. time I did it was when. Addictive. First time I did it was when I actually started teaching science. I never done it when I was a kid. But even and the first time I did it, and I was like, oh, this is actually kind of cool. But then it wears. <laughs> there's grown ups. Away. So grown ups buy versions of slime. It's not just a kid's thing. They, they call it stress putty or stress oh. balls. Uh, but there is. Right. Grown ups need to grow there's up. There's a satisfaction in, in squeezing slime. There's a, there's a huge. It's a sensory. Dis as a thing, parent, right? it doesn't go well with a sofa. That's, <laughs> that's my yeah. issue with slime. I've got slime all over a bed sheet, a stuffed cat. And stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it doesn't. It doesn't yeah, go particularly well with a dog. I know weird. you have a cat, right? So for a second, <laughs> I didn't really hear no, that stuffed yeah. part, and I was like, on Gizmo? Yeah. No, no. It's <laughs> no, a Gizmo, no, right? No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be well, hilarious. That would be not hilarious. So would be a bit of a disaster, catastrophe. Hey. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. It gets on everything. It yeah. does. Parents don't like slime. <laughs> That's exactly why. Uh, any other questions? Yep. How does so disintegrate blue tech? Like not disintegrate it, but just like make it all pulpy. Pulpy, yeah. Pulpy okay. blue tech. Yes. Yeah, so I've noticed it more with oil, right? If you have yeah. like oil and blue tech, I think what's happening is it's starting to dissolve the blue tech. Mm -hmm. So it's starting to break down the bonds between the molecules of blue tech, right? and dissolving it, yeah. so that's why it's becoming pulpy. Before we think about the answer to that, although we started. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Why, why, where's that question come from? <laughs> a very real life experience. Well, I, saw go on. A, I saw on a video that you can add soap to blue tag and this, mix oh, okay. it yeah. and it'll turn into slime. And where so, did you get the video? Uh, I forgot where, but it was something on YouTube. Yeah. Ah, so you don't believe anything you see on YouTube. <laughs> Except this. Except for this. Yeah. <laughs> Except between two nerds. <laughs> so you were watching a video and someone was putting blue tack in soap. Soap in blue tack. Claiming that what would happen? No, they it showed would... the slime. And yeah, it did turn into slime, but after 10 seconds it disappeared. It could. Oh, as a way of, okay, as a way of making slime. So breaking think... down the blue tack to... Yeah. 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 yeah, it could work, but um, I think you'd have to get the ratios very spot on. I presume blue tack is a polymer in the first place, is it? Feels like it acts like one. Oh. It's cool how it works. That's a, that's a between two nerds <laughs> presumption to be checked. Uh, it's cool how it works, yeah. right? So, yeah. like how glues work in the first place. So it's increasing electric electrostatic forces in between objects, right? So, like you know, friction, right? So it's the force that kind of stops you moving. Right, so that's because, so the reason why we have friction is because if you look at a surface, 
like under a microscope, you'll see all these little bumps. No matter how smooth the surface is. You always see bumps. Yeah, you always have these tiny bumps and little valleys and on any two surfaces. So when those they're in contact and you're trying to move them, there are all these places, right, where there can be these electric forces that are trying to resist that motion to begin with. Yeah. Okay. So how so water makes things slippery. Right? And the way water does that is because when you have a wet surface, the water is filling up all those little grooves and mountains leveling off that surface. So that's why if you try to slide something when there's water on it, there's less friction. And yeah. oil is even better mm. at it that. Just, it just fills up the remaining space. Yeah, Very so good. it's taking up all those little gaps. And that's why water is so smooth. Yeah, and um, so that's what happens you know, when it's raining. It's been raining today. Uh, t last night yep. and when it's been raining so when you're driving your tires don't have as much grip on the surface and that's because of the water filling up all the little bumps on the roads that give us that grip now blue tech what blue tech does it kind of fits in between because it can change its shape yeah. it fits in between all those little grooves and bumps and things and increases the amount of friction essentially between objects and that's how it's how it sticks it oh okay right and that's how most glues kind of work as well unless unless it's the kind that dissolves something and that's really how bugs can walk mm. on walls because on their feet they have all these like tiny little hairs which increase the surface area and increase friction pretty much and lets them walk up on ceilings walls yeah yeah, yeah. But you'd be surprised how rough surfaces are. The, um, like even the, the floor. The classic. Uh, so you know what a billiard ball, a snooker ball? Yeah. So they, they feel smooth, don't they? Yeah. And now if you took planet Earth and shrunk it, which wouldn't be easy, but if you shrunk that down to the size of a billiard ball, which one do you think would be smoother, the billiard ball or planet Earth with its mountains and valleys? And Obviously the ball. <laughs> the ball would be... Yeah. Smoother. I'm pretty sure it's the Earth because it's supposed to be a science fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it exactly. is uh, very good. good. It's, 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 well reasoned. It's, it's supposed really to be a science cool fact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I banging on about it if there it's is really a, cool, an though. interesting answer? Yeah, so the, really cool. the planet would be smoother than the billiard yeah. ball, which I find, I still yeah. find mind boggling. I've, actually, I've take, actually seen this in like when I was doing engineering, like in labs, yeah. we had a it's our tribology, I think, so what they call this, the science of like friction yep. and all of that. And you can actually take a surface and they can map out. So we see like a readout of like all the little bumps yeah, on yeah, the yeah. surface. So cool. But then you look at a billiard ball and it's like, well, where it's is, polished, yeah. where are the mountains? Yeah. Where is the Mariana Trench? Where, where's all that? Yeah, it's just our fingertips Bumps. are just not sensitive yeah. enough to feel. It's my eyes. <laughs> I feel my so, eyes. Like the earth, so like it. the highest point on earth is about eight kilometers up. Yeah. It's a long way away. Yeah. Almost the height of like planes fly. To what, 11 kilometers down? Yeah, so to 11 19. kilometers down. And even then, if you like, it's just on a billiard ball. So if you took a billiard ball and scaled that up to the size of the earth, you'd have higher mountains and lower. What's the diameter down. of the earth? It's 40,000 kilometers. That's circumference, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, circumference. So divide by three. Point, divide by pi. <laughs> three point four one four. I think it's twelve thousand. Okay, to so twelve thousand, and you got nineteen thousand. I think it's twelve thousand. So, so you got, so you got nineteen right. <laughs> kilometers of play. Yeah. In a twelve odd thousand. Yeah, no, it does make sense. I think now. when you do the maths, yeah. <laughs> it's like okay. I, I think the smoothest objects in the universe are like neutron stars. They're even more smoother at the same scale. Well, it feels so good to feel something like so smooth. Like, <laughs> and, so satisfying. And um, do you have another question? Yeah. yeah. How does oobleck work? Oobleck. Okay. It's, it's really very cool. cool. It so is there's cool. some kitchen science throughout. Kitchen science. Slime <laughs> science. Uh, what is oobleck? Uh, it's uh, sort of. Oobleck. How'd you make? Yeah. How'd you make it? Uh, In case. I think cornstarch and water. I yeah, a very bad, tasteless gravy. Yeah, it's cornstarch and water in the right proportion, right ratios, yeah. right? You know why it's called Ublick? Who gave it a name? Ublick, Mr. <laughs> John Ublick. 
John Oblak. Yeah. I thought it was Billy Oblak. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Oblak? What? It's, uh, it sounds it's... like a weird YouTube channel. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> You're on a weird YouTube channel. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's um, it's a Dr. S in one of Dr. Seuss's books. I can't remember okay. which one. One with the aliens come something. Alien? Yeah, there's a word he uses, which is Oblak, and then that was used for Oblak, right? <laughs> But the cool thing, about, what's the cool thing about Ublik? Like when you hit it, it's hard, but when you like hold it, it just like melts. Okay, mm. good. So, so it behaves like a liquid, right? For the most part. But then if you were to hit it, it goes... Like it just solid. It's really hard, it goes yeah, solid. solid, exactly, okay. Now it again has to do with phases of matter, right? Now if you had a, let's say you had a pool, right? You have a pool here. Now, if you were to put your foot into the pool of water, right, what would happen? Well, it would go in. It would go in. Why? What's happening with the water molecules to give you that space for your foot? Uh, I guess since there's a little bit of extra space, then your foot, then they're just like moving out of the way. Yeah, they're so moving out of the way. Space. Yeah, exactly. And actually, water rises, displaces. Goes from that place to this place, <laughs> <laughs> right? Anyway, so um, okay, but now when you dive into the water, what then, happens? Well, in the question, I just answered it. When you dive into a pool, what happens? You go in. Yeah, go in because water can get out of the way quick like, enough. If you like, hit, if it didn't, <laughs> if you like hit the water, yeah. Then Actually, when you belly flop, ouch. Right? Yeah. So you land on your belly, you have a huge surface area. That time though, the water can't quite get out of the way quick enough and that's why that hurts so bad. Right? But now with Ublek, if you had a pool of Ublek and you put your foot in, what would happen? It would go in. Yeah, it'd go in because mm -hmm. the molecules of Ublek can move away. Right? If, um, if you had, if you dove into the pool, what do you think would happen? Uh, you would go in. If you did a belly flop, then you would probably do Yeah, it. actually, yeah. So it depends on acceleration and all of this stuff in the case, in this case. But there's a, um, a property of Ublik is that the molecules have, they don't shear as fast. That means they don't move away from each other as fast. And I guess it's because there's more uh, stronger molecules of uh, bonds of attraction mm. between them. So they can't get away get out of the way quick enough so actually if you were to just have faith in the science and just run across that pool because you're moving so quickly Duh. right the pool the oobleck underneath you would go solid and wouldn't have time to get out of the way basically. yeah exactly mm -hmm. right you'd make it all the way yeah yeah and it's the same thing so we call it a non-newtonian viscous fluid <laughs> Obviously. <Yes. laughs> so viscous, how viscous something is, is like its thickness of something, all right? Uh, viscosity, that's a, so something that's viscous, we say has a high viscosity is something that's thicker, okay? Yeah. And then... Um, are there any other um, substances that are like Ublek? Yeah, so mm -hmm. there are, so custard. Custard? Yeah, yeah, custard's one of them. That's yeah. a non-Newtonian viscous fluid. That's cool. Okay, yeah. Custard, you're like... Ran across a pool of custard. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it done on a TV show. Uh, Brainiac, I remember Brainiac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen it done. Well, um, you so can you make can run. custard, uh, depending on the too. custard, you mm. can make custard thicker or thinner. Yeah. Some custards are served and it's so thick that if you put your spoon in, your spoon stays up. My dad yeah. doesn't think a custard's a custard <laughs> unless when he puts his spoon in, the spoon stays upright. <laughs> you can get yeah. super solid custards. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about viscosity. Viscosity. Yeah. So Ublik's really cool for that case. So it's fun to play with. And then I love doing the thing when you grab some and you quickly roll it around and it makes a lump. And then as soon as you open your hand, it goes kind of dissolves yeah. into that puddle. And it's really easy to clean up as well. Which is fun. Is it? Which is, is it? Don't do that on the which sofa is handy. again. <laughs> yeah. I have a speaker dog. that I would sort of oh, say yeah. otherwise. <laughs> There's Ublik all over it. Because it's a cool thing, if you get a speaker, a cone, right, the thing that's giving out the sound, it vibrates to make the sound waves, and you put Ublik into it, and you play the right frequency mm. of sound, right, lower frequencies, 
the oobleg starts to come alive and dance like morph morph remember is morph yeah, that yeah, little morph. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like morph. these little kind of like plaster sceney men not men and women oh. <laughs> coming out Creatures. of the oobleg and like dancing it around was super famous yeah it was stop motion that's cool. Yeah, Morph was awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah you should bring try back it. Morph. Whoever, whoever's Take the speaker for. in your house. <laughs> yeah, rip the front <laughs> off, lie it down. <laughs> Put some oobleck in there. <laughs> Probably do it when your parents are out. <laughs> and then say it with someone else when they get home. Yeah. But it is a cool experiment. Yeah. Cool. You'd be ruining the house in the name of science. <laughs> and what fine. better reason to ruin a house? <laughs> get your cat in there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gizmo. <laughs> <love> <laughs> <laughs> or fill your bathtub with oobleck, put your cat in, and see... A cat, bathtub, <laughs> oobleck. Yeah, classic combo. <laughs> Very science -y combo. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? A couple of bits. A couple of bits. <laughs> yeah. stuck my bathtub. I totally messed up. I still I think, think it's worth it. If you do quick it, quicksand as well, by the way. Up. Quicksand must be sort of something like that. Oh, I think it's the density of yeah, the Yes, it's that yeah. slow sink yeah. and hard pull. Yeah. So when you pull hard on quicksand, so if you're in quicksand, don't move fast. Yeah. Because as soon as you move, try and move, it'll hold you. But if you move really slowly, mm. you can pull yourself out. And also, Pro according usually, to Bear Grylls. Yeah. <laughs> also, usually you can just, I think you shouldn't panic, which is the main thing, because you'll always be at a level where your face is above, so you can breathe. Because when people panic, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then that's how they kind of settle Shimmy in more. Down, yeah. yeah. But this could be that completely is total rubbish. Nonsense. Please comment if <laughs> yeah. uh, Barry Grylls drop us a line. <laughs> yeah. So, do you enjoy that? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Thank Charizard. You very there much were some for cool in. kitchen Welcome. chemistry questions. Slime questions. Yeah. And uh, you're a YouTube expert, so if, <laughs> if you enjoyed that, as we as we mentioned, please do leave a comment or like and subscribe. Now, where would we point for like, the like? Subscribe. Uh, subscribe and the little bell. Uh, here very good that little <laughs> bell down there so yeah yeah not and if you're listening to us please do rate rate is it us. rate yeah rate leave us star rate. us yeah tag us. a review tell us what we did right did wrong <laughs> we're hopeful uh we spent a lot of time we're hoping the because loads of you have commented uh rightly on <laughs> our sound quality so we are hopeful that this yeah. is coming across a little better uh but we'll continue to work We're on just that. A couple of science teachers, yeah. nerds, not techies, <laughs> experimenting. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. All right, Jerry. That. Thank you. You want to give us a little high uh, five? High five, I guess. Can you wave? <laughs> wave. Don't stop waving. Don't stop waving. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>